The theme for AG World Missions this year is He is Worthy. And it comes from Revelations 5, 9. And it says, you are worthy because you were slain, and with your blood you purchase for God. So the theme this year is, he is worthy. But I actually have a question that pertains to us. And it kind of goes off with this. And it's, is he worthy? Is he worthy of praise? I heard like two over here. Is he worthy of praise? He is in Psalms 145 verses 1 through 3. It says, I will exalt you, my God and King, and praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you every day. Yes, I will praise you forever. Great is the Lord. He is the most, he is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. He is worthy of praise. Is he worthy to receive glory and honor? He is in Revelations 4.11. It says, you are worthy, O Lord, O Lord our God, to receive glory, honor, and power. For you created all things, and they exist because you created what pleased you. There's a song that's called Worthy of It All, and the, the line inside the chorus is, from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. So, he's worthy of praise. He's worthy of glory and honor. Now, is he worthy to do something? Is he worthy for us to do something? We have missionaries in the populated parts of the world to the remote parts of the world, all to share the news that there is a God who loves you and died for you so that you may be with him forever and ever. We support missions and missionaries, those who have been called to go to the ends of the earth to share about the love of Jesus. It is important for us to support them in giving and in prayer. In giving and in prayer. Why is it important for us to support them while in giving? Because quite frankly, for our missionaries, this might be their only livelihood. This might be the only way they get any type of monetary income. So it's important for us to give to help them. Because I don't know where in the world you can go to where you can buy a Coke for free. But it's also very important for us to pray for them. Because the struggle is real. The struggle is real. Pastor mentioned it about them being out of the country. Some of them, I think almost all of the AG World missionaries, no matter where they were, they were called back home, right? During COVID. Or, or some of them were. Depending on where they were, they were called back home because of COVID, because of how things were, because of the outbreak. AG World Missions called them home. In fact, the executive director of AG World Missions caught COVID. Yeah, he almost died. He was on, a, he was on life support and everything. So the struggle is real. See, there's a lot of times that even if they're there with their family, even if they're there with other people, and a missionary can feel alone. They can feel that they don't have anybody to talk to, they don't have anybody to really relate to. And it's important for us to pray to remind them in the spirit that they are not alone. We are not there to encourage them physically, but our prayers encourage them spiritually. And, and I can tell you this much, the spiritual encouragement will push through and help them with the physical part. We hear it time and time again with the missionaries who have come. 
Thank you for your support. And they go, and thank you for your prayers. It is important for us to pray for our missionaries. They need our prayers. But we must remember that the Great Commission in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, I'm reading it out of the NLT. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commandments I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. We must remember that the Great Commission isn't just for those who are called to the mission field. But the Great Commission is for us as well. It is for us as well. I like how there's a spoken word video that Speed the Light came out with a couple years ago. And this teenage um, he's probably like graduated already. But he said a line aside there that just, it hits you if you hear it. A lot of times the spoken word, they talk kind of fast, you can't really hear it. But if you break it down and you hear what he says, he said, when are we going to realize that the Great Commission is not the Great Suggestion? When are we going to realize that the Great Commission is not the Great Suggestion? In a song by Matthew West entitled, Do Something, it starts off with this. I woke up this morning, saw the world full of trouble now, thought how, how'd we ever get so far down and how it's going to turn around. So I turned my eyes to heaven and thought, God, why don't you do something? Well, I just couldn't bear the thought of people living in poverty, children sold into slavery. That thought disgusted me. So I sh shook my fist till heaven and said, why don't you do something? He said, I did. I created you. The work must be done by us as well. In Acts 1.8, it says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be witness, my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, through Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. If we break this down, up to where Jesus says, where you should be witnessing and telling people about me, he starts off in, in Jerusalem. They were based in Jerusalem, right? So that's home. Telling people in Jerusalem, telling people at home base, telling people who are around you at home to Judea. Judea was a region. From home, you go to the region. And this part is even fun. funnier because Jesus goes... And to Samaria, now we have to remember, they did not like the Samaritans. So what is Jesus saying? Even the ones you don't like. Tell them about me and tell them I love them. And to the ends of the earth. We may, not call, we may not be called to go to the ends of the earth. We may not be called by God to go into the mission field, to go to Angola, to go to all these different type of places. But we are called to be missionaries nonetheless. We are called to do something. We are called to reach Jerusalem. Let me change it. We are called to reach Wahewa. We are called to reach the North Shore. I guess they'll call it the central area, my bad. We are called to reach Oahu. We are the salt of the earth. We've heard that time and time again. We are the salt of the earth. We are the salt of the earth. We are the salt of the earth. <clears throat> Excuse me. Salt is used as a preservative and a flavor enhancer. 
right? The old, the old way of making like pipi cola and everything else like that, or even like salted salmon. You put the salt on top of it, you put weights on top of the salmon, and you let it go for... But it's a preservative. It takes out the moisture, and what it does, it helps to preserve the food. Because back then, there was no such thing as refrigeration. There was no such thing as anything else. In fact, salt was used as a way of payment back then. That's how precious salt was. Can you imagine being over there and everybody's like, you know, the term nowadays is get that bag, get that money. Can you imagine back then, like, get that salt? It's a preservative and it's a flavor enhancer. A little bit of salt on a finished dish. If you ever go to a fancy restaurant and they bring you this dessert, and a lot of times it's with chocolate. I don't know what the deal is with chocolate and with sea salt. They will finish a dessert with sea salt. And in your mind, you're kind of going, what? But when you have it, the flavor that the salt gives is not overpowering, but it enhances what it's on top. You see, we are to be the salt of the earth. We are to be preserved in Christ. And that comes from spending time with him, getting to know him better, praying, reading the word, listening to what he has to say. And we're also called to be the salt of the earth. When people come around us, do they taste the Holy Spirit? Do they taste the Holy Spirit? Or do they taste someone who is not preserved well and the meat is rotting? The song continues, I'm so tired of talking about how we are God's hands and feet, but it's easier to say than to be. Live like angels of apathy, who tells ourself, it's all right, someone else will do something. Well, I don't know about you, but I am sick and tired of life with no desire. I don't want a flame, I want a fire. And I want to be the one who stands up and says, I'm going to do something. We are a city on a hill. When people use this, they see a city on the hill as symbolization for hope. It's a symbolization for hope. When you see that, people look up and they see the city on the hill and they're like, man, can you imagine what it's like to be there? Can you imagine all the good stuff that comes out of there? Can you imagine what it's like? We are the city on a hill. When people see us, do they see the hope we have in Jesus? Because that's what the city on the hill is. It is hope. It is hope for a people who have no hope. And are we like, Jim, like Jesus? We must be willing to come down from that city to infect the world. You cannot change the world by doing nothing. The song continues, we are the salt of the earth, we are a city on a hill but we're never going to change the world by standing still. Is it important for us to support our missionaries? Is it important for us to pray for them? Yes, it is. But if that's all we do, we're missing the point. If that is all we do, then my question for you is this. Is he really worthy? We know he is worthy of glory, honor, and praise. But is he worthy enough in your life to do something? Is he really worthy in your life to do something? One of my, one of my friends, his name is Pastor Darren Fisher. He used to work with Global Passion, which was a, a missionary. 
I don't know what to call it, a missionary, but they did mission trips. He was the vice president for there for a couple years. He is now in charge. He is now um, at the Office of Credentials in Northern California District. And he came over here for a conference, got stuck over here because of COVID. Not only got stuck over here, got stuck over here for two years. God called him to resign from his position at Global Passion. He resigned. He became the youth pastor over at Connect Point in Hilo, who are district youth director. That is his church. And so he came over here. In fact, he found his wife here. All of us are cracking up laughing. Man, what is, look at God's plan. You have, you're a boy from California, been all over the world, reaching people for Christ, just to get stranded in Hawaii so God can give you a wife. And what made it even more funny is that his wife is Lindsay Akasaki. Her parents are the pastors over at Bayview Chapel. Lindsay is originally from Kansas. So God took Lindsay from Kansas, put her to Kaneohe to meet a guy from California. But we were sitting down and talking one day at the camp, and he is a foodie. He is a foodie and a Dr. Pepper fiend. If you ever want to meet some of the weirdest people in the world, you need to meet the Dr. Pepper fiends. Now, I'm not saying that you like Dr. Pepper, you think it's a good drink. No, 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 no. That is not a Dr. Pepper fiend. I am talking about those you take their blood and it comes out Dr. Pepper. And he and I were having a conversation, which started off, dude, what's the deal with Dr. Pepper, man? It's, I mean, it's okay. It's not me. He's like, no, you don't understand it. And we started talking, and we started talking about Dr. Pepper. Then we ended up going about food, and we found out that he is a huge Chick-fil-A fan, which I'm like, shoot, I like Chick-fil-A. There's, there's going to be a couple here soon. <laughs> you didn't know that? And we began to talk about that. And because of my background, it's easy to go into food. So we started talking about more different types of food. And we started talking about, you know, where I work. And all of a sudden, the conversation shifted. And we just started talking about Jesus. And we just started talking about these different types of things. And I sat there and I went, I don't mean to be weird. We call him Fish because his last name is Fish. I don't mean to be weird, Fish, but that was pretty unique. That was pretty cool that we went from talking about this and we went all the way to Jesus. He said, dude, that's how you can tell people who love Jesus. He said, no matter the conversation, no matter what you're doing, one way or another, you'll find a way back to the Lord. You'll find a way back to the Lord. You see, when we think about missions, we think that we need to go out there, hold up signs, and do everything else like that. We need to go do this. We need to get in people's faces. No, you can have a simple conversation and take them from one point and get them to Jesus. You can take them from here to Jesus. And if you love the Lord, and if he is Lord of your heart, you'll be surprised how God will mold that conversation into being. Sometimes it might be some of the most weirdest conversations you start off with, but you find your way back to Jesus. That is doing something. The Bible says to take care of those who are widows and orphans. You know what also is a great way to reach someone for the Lord? Smile. Steve taught me that. He did. I remember one time we were working on one of the vehicles that I had, and he took me to go get a part. And I, for, I forgot where we were walking to Steve. And there was this lady who was just like, really? And Steve walks by. And he looks at her with a smile on her face and say, good morning. She went, oh, good morning. You see, when the joy of the Lord is your strength. When the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's being the salt of the earth right there. The lady wasn't even expecting anything. Oh, but she got some salt. Do something. Is he worthy to do something?